Okay, so as I was saying, with the velocity we chose of 0.1 meters per second um, here, it's not um, heating up the water much. It's only only going from 293 to 296 uh, as the area weighted average. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and um, go back to the boundary conditions. I'm going to recalculate with a like let's say I'm I'm literally I'm making up these numbers but let's say half as fast and um, let's go ahead and everything else is going to change the same let's initialize again um, top surface uh, initialize okay all right so this is all fine, 300 iterations. Let's do it again. Okay, after 38 iterations, it was complete. Let's go ahead and see the contour again. All right, Let's see the top surface. Okay. It's the same. All right, now let me, this time let's see with the inlet it's 293 and the outlet is 300 okay so you can see that the speed of the water has an effect at how much how hot it gets now let me see we can do the face maximum so although the average is 300 degrees Kelvin there is a maximum of 307, but that's probably right along the wall. Um, 293 to 300 degrees Kelvin is what we're getting. Um, so basically, that's pretty much it. Um, what I might do right now is go ahead and let's go into results. Let's edit. I want to show you really quickly um, the results. Okay. Contour. Let's do um let's do the fluid domain uh interface. Let's do the temperature. Let's do a local um range. Uh let's do fifteen whoops, not that many. Fifteen contours apply and there you go that's the um, that's the water heating up going from well it's, it's going from 293 but here it's going from 2975 because this is the interface right next to the wall um, if I wanted to spend a little more time I could do a cross section you know a cross section here and right through the middle and see what the temperatures are uh, how the temperatures are changing down the center but this is this is still pretty good uh, just to give you an idea of what's happening um, you could also do the um, vectors velocity vectors let's do that let's do the fluid domain and let's do the fluid velocity apply I think that uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. let's 
zoom in here. Um, I'm trying to remember how to get rid of this interface. Um, kind of blanking here, but you can you can change this so that you can see um, the vectors. And right now, it's this interface. The wall is um, is blocking it, which is kind of aggravating. I know it's over here somewhere. Oh, there you go. All right, so. Now let's go ahead and change this factor. So basically, you can see how uh, along the the pipe walls, you've got um, slower velocities than in the center, um, and you can play around with it. You can do solid volume rendering. Okay, let's do let's do the solid and let's do the temperature. Uh, global is fine and let's apply that and let's go ahead and second let's see the um I'm gonna get rid of the vector I wanna do the Okay, cool. So um, this is just to give you an idea of what you can do um, with these things. A couple tools. I like. I said I'm new to this also, but um, oh my gosh! Like like you can see, as you can see. Let's go ahead and do that right there. And um, hopefully, this is gonna help somebody someday, someday, somehow. But basically, this is showing how um, how to set up a problem in Fluent uh, with a solid to fluid uh, heat transfer. And uh, as you could see, the fluid was heated up, albeit not that hot, but it did heat up. And um, this might uh, help somebody. You can do very similarly a problem where you've got like uh, a fluid on the outside, a solid, and then a uh, fluid on the inside. The only thing that's going to change is that when you um, when you're doing the meshing, to make sure that you specify where the interfaces are, the interface between the fluids and the solids, and make sure that when you go into the fluid solver, make sure that each of those interface has a shadow, like here, you know, interface shadow, and um, and you should be good. Um, that's all I'm going to do for this uh, tutorial. 
في 